Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Photoshop Training Hour. I am your host, Jesus Ramirez, and in today's episode, I'm going to show you how to change the color of anything in Photoshop. We're going to go through several examples that will show you different techniques on changing color and how to get better results. This episode of the Photoshop Training Hour is sponsored by our good friends at MSI, so make sure that you check out the MSI products in the links in the description. And we're gonna jump right into it. We have a lot to cover. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments. And also if I show anything that you enjoy, make sure that you click on that thumbs up button. So let me switch my screen here to the left. And as you can see, this is Photoshop and we have a yellow couch. So I'm gonna show you several different, techni uh, several different techniques on how you can change the color of anything in Photoshop. So. If you wanted to change the color of an object like a couch, obviously you would use a tool like the hue and saturation adjustment layer. This tool works great for most color changes and there's a little tweak that I like uh, doing on using this tool that a lot of people don't do and I feel that it gives you much more control of the resulting color and you'll see what I mean by that in a moment. The first step is just to make a selection of the item that you want to adjust. In this case, we want to change the color of the couch. One of the easiest ways of selecting the couch is by using the quick selection tool. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to ask, let me know if my audio is good. We were having issues in the previous stream, so hopefully this is much better. So just let me know in the chat if the audio is good for you. But anyway, so what I'm going to do now is simply click and drag using the quick selection tool to select the couch. A couple things to notice is that even though I'm not in that layer, I'm able to just select the couch. Sometimes I feel that you get better results if you actually select the layer that contains the object that you're in. Notice that sample all layers was not selected and it was still doing a good job. So I can also enable it if I, if I want to, if I were on the layer above and also enhance edge. So click and drag and make sure that you select the object whose color you want to change. If you make a mistake like I did here on the left hand side, you can always hold the Alt key on Windows, that's the Option key on the Mac and click and drag to subtract. You can also use the left and right bracket keys on the keyboard. Uh, that's, those are right next to the letter P in North American keyboards to increase and decrease your brush size. So I'm just making a larger brush so I can just hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac and drag down to deselect. Cool. And um, audio is good, but very, very low. So I'm gonna get the mic microphone closer to me and let me know if that works for you. Um, let me, uh, well, people are saying the audio is good and other people are saying it's low. So um, it looks like the audio is good. Anyway, so I'm going to click and drag now on the uh, area here to deselect from her shirt. And I'm not going to spend too much time fine tuning the selection. We can always come back and do that. But the point is that once you have your main subject selected, you can just delete the layer mask from this hue and saturation adjustment layer and then just add it to uh, click on the layer mask icon to make that selection into the layer mask for that hue and saturation adjustment layer. And you probably have seen this before. You can shift the hue by clicking and dragging on this slider. So what do I mean by shifting the hue? Well, if you open up the color picker, you'll notice that every color that you select, it doesn't really matter which one, has three components, the hue, saturation, and brightness. In this case, it's using the lightness. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on what the differences are between HSB and HSL, but if you really want to know what the differences are, um, I have a YouTube video that talks all about that. Um, I guess I can link to it in the description, but if you um, search for saturation versus vibrance, I go into detail on the difference between those two color modes. And this is the, the video here. It's called Photoshop Saturation versus Vibrance, the best for color enhancement. And the thumbnail is, is this one right here, which is better. So you can search for that. And I guess I can just copy the, the link and paste it in the chat if you want to um, check that out. And you can see the differences between those two. But it 
it um it doesn't matter for the purposes of this video. So what I'm going to do now is continue what I was trying to describe. So we have hue, saturation, and brightness. When you adjust the hue slider, what you're really doing is essentially dragging um, this slider up and down. So the saturation will not change and the brightness will not change, just the hue or the color. And then when you adjust the saturation slider, it's like increase, uh, it's just like increasing the saturation. So basically moving this left to right. So going to the left, no saturation. Going to the right is at its most saturated. And then lightness, I think, is the easiest one to understand. The color is either bright or dark. So those are the three components, and that's what you're adjusting here. You just are adjusting the, the current hue and shifting the hue to a different location. In some cases, this works just fine, and you don't need to worry about it. Other times, you may need to colorize those pixels. So let me see if I can find a good example in this image here. So when I, I check colorize, what happens is that you're mapping the hue that you select onto those pixels. So you're no longer shifting hues. You're just telling Photoshop, make the hue whatever you select. So when I click on colorize, whatever color I pick from this slider, you can see blue in this case, I will map that hue onto the pixels below. And with this unchecked, I'm shifting the hue. So you may encounter areas that are not pure of that color. You might see in some areas that there's a little bit of other different colors in there. That's because you're not really colorizing, you're shifting the hue. So it's up to you to decide what you do in your project, but there is a difference. Let me see if there's any questions before we move on. Cool. So what we're going to do now is continue working on this uh, image. Now, when you make an adjustment to the hue, you can get good results. But depending on the color that you go for, you may not. Because, um, let me see, let, let's go for, let me, let's go for like a light blue color. So if we go for a light blue color, and when I adjust lightness, watch what happens. The image gets very flat. Or if I want to make it darker, the image still gets flat. There's not much contrast when you make that adjustment. So this is why I prefer adding a second adjustment layer to this equation to get better results. And I usually just disregard the lightness slider because in some cases it just doesn't give me the results that I want. See if I wanted this darker blue, it, the image just looks flat and it also looks flat if I drag to the right. So how do I fix that? Well. Let's start by setting up our layers. I'm going to create a new group and I'm just going to call this group color change. And I'm gonna click and drag up and drop, uh, drop the mask onto that group. So now I'm going to use one layer mask to control multiple adjustment layers. The reason that I'm going to do that is so that if I want to make a change to my mask, I only do it once and not two or more times depending on how many adjustment layers I have. Then I can click and drag this hue and saturation slider into that color change group. And what I'm gonna do now is create uh, a levels adjustment layer. You can also use curves or any other brightness adjustment layer that you like. I just think curves is easier to use, especially for something like this. And I'm gonna drag that levels adjustment layer below the hue and saturation adjustment layer. And what I'm going to do now is adjust the center gamma slider. So notice that when I go to the right, I can make that color darker, but I maintain that contrast. Notice that there is a lot of contrast in the image and I don't get that flat look as I do when I reduce the lightness. See that, see the difference? When I reduce the lightness, the image looks really, really um, flat. But, if, but by using this levels adjustment layer, I can now control the contrast of that image. And before with the hue and saturation adjustment layer, I only had one slider to control the brightness of that new color, the lightness slider. But in, in this case, with the levels adjustment layer, I have five. I have the three on top here. That looks kind of funky, but I can still control them. And the two at the bottom. So I have total control of how the image looks or how the color looks by using a levels adjustment layer. And if I wanted to brighten up the color, I can do that as well. Try to maintain contrast 
And obviously I can keep fine tuning it all day until I get the result that I want. And I can always go back into the hue and saturation adjustment layer and shift the hue or apply the colorization, whatever works best for your image. And like I said before, since I have one layer mask, then I can control that uh, really, really easily. For example, I, mean, I made a mistake here. So I can come in with the brush tool and paint with white. Again, I'm using the bracket keys to resize my brush and I can come in here and paint that in. And obviously I'm not spending too much time getting it right, but I think that you get the idea. So this is, in my opinion, one of the most efficient ways of changing colors in Photoshop because it gives you the best results as opposed to just using one single adjustment layer and then running into the problem of possibly getting flatter colors without having the appropriate contrast in your image. Obviously, if you just want to make a, a simple color change where you just, you know, maybe just switch the hue a little bit over to a different color, like maybe that um, salmon color there, that's totally fine. You don't need to create another levels adjustment layer, but if you start adjusting the lightness, then I would definitely consider adding that second adjustment layer and placing the layer mask into the one group. So what I'm gonna do now is move on into the next example. Cool. Um, what about turning objects color to black or white? Well, if you wanted to make this a um, white couch, it's basically the same thing. And actually I would use the levels adjustment layer for that. So what I would do in that case is just bring the saturation down to negative 100, so the couch is now desaturated. And with the levels adjustment layer, I would just control it, uh, control the gamma, see that? I can come to the left, and it all depends on the detail that you have. So the more detail you have in the image, the, the more you're gonna be able to um, adjust the photo. If you're working with a JPEG that's been compressed and there's not a lot of details in the highlights and shadows, this may be a little more difficult, but it's the same thing. If I wanted to make this black, then I would go the other way something like that. And also you have to remember where the object that you have is in your scene. If you notice this image is very, very bright. There's a light, uh, bright light source coming from the right. It looks like it could be a window. And it also looks like this light may even be on. At least that's what it looks like to, to my eye. The point is, is that we have a bright light source coming from the right. So this probably wouldn't be jet black. You know, it, it might be more closer to like a dark gray or something like that, just because there's so much light in the scene. So you have to keep that in mind. But the point is that by using this hue and saturation adjustment layer, you can just bring the saturation down to zero. And with the levels adjustment layer, just go right to make it darker or black, and then go left to make it white. Totally up to you and the effect that you want to create. So that's how I would do the um, um, black and white color swaps. Um, cool. Um, so the question is, what did I do um, so that only the color of the sofa changed. I created a layer mask uh, in case you missed it. These are the steps just in case you missed them. I'm going to go through them super quickly. So with a quick, with the quick selection tool, I just selected the objects that I wanted to affect with my color change. If you make a mistake, you can hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac to subtract from that selection. Once you have your selection active, um, you can create a hue and saturation adjustment layer and adjust the hue. Then I went on to explain that if you're gonna make a color change where you adjust the lightness, I would recommend adding a second layer to that because it, if you adjust lightness, you might flatten out the object. In this case, the couch looks very flat if I either brighten it or darken it. So the way to fix that is by creating a group, adding that layer mask that you created to the group. So you can just click and drag it into it like so drag the hue and saturation adjustment layer into the group, and then create a levels adjustment layer, or it could be a curves adjustment layer, whatever you prefer, and put that below the hue and saturation adjustment layer inside of that group. And then with the gamma slider, you can just make it darker or brighter, whatever you want. And you have five sliders where you can control the contrast of the image so that the image doesn't look fat, uh, flat 
and it still has the color adjustment that you applied. Is it important uh, which adjustment layer is up? So if you notice here with this adjustment, if I drag the levels adjustment layer above the hue and saturation adjustment layer, yeah, it's, it's not really a big change. And that is mainly because um, the colors that I'm using, sometimes I find that having the levels adjustment layer above gives me different results. So I don't like using it. In this case, it looks like it gives me the same result but I do prefer having it on the bottom just because that's how it also makes more sense in my mind that I'm adjusting the, the brightness and then on top of that, I'm adding hue and saturation. But sometimes it doesn't make sense. Cool. It looks like the audio is down again. Um, I have it up as high as I can go. Let me try increasing it through here and let me know if that makes it better for you guys. Um, I can't really tell, so let me know if this is better. Um, cool. Um, so somebody wrote, can't you just use a color gradient for all that? Well, you can use a color gradient, but the downside is that it's more work, right? So let me, let me show you what I mean by that. Um, so a color gradient, I'm just gonna create one using the same layer mask and go into the gradient map. And the question is, can you use a gradient map? Well, for a black and white um, result, I guess you can. It, it, it gives you a great result. But if I wanted to make it a different color, um, I think that it requires more work um, just because you have to set up, you know, what the darkest color would be, like a dark, um, dark green. And then maybe the, you know, the color that I'm really targeting would be a, a green that looks like that. And then the highlight might be a different shade of green something like that. So I, I just think that it requires more work to do all of this. You can certainly use it if you want, but in my opinion, it requires more work. Something that you might be thinking more well, is, well, you can use that and then change the blending mode to color and let the luminosity from the layer at the bottom affect the gradient map. And that works too. But if you want to change the um, brightness of the color that you change, you still have to use another adjustment layer, whether it's levels or curves. But I mean, you can certainly, you know, make um, make a color change using this technique with a gradient map. But I think that it's, it's much more time consuming to make adjustments, right? So like if I wanted to make this red, you know, instead of green, well, now I have to change this one to green or, or to red, sorry. And then this one to like a lighter red, something like that. And then this one, it's like a really dark red or something. But the point is that, you know, it just requires a little more fine tuning and a little more work. So I wouldn't do it that way, but feel free if you get the results that you want, why not? Cool. Yeah, um, yeah so like some people in the chat are saying, gradient maps just requires more work. Awesome. So now let me show you another technique. Um, sometimes you may be working with an image and let me open up another image. Sometimes you may be working on an image that, you know, requires some specific targeting, right? So maybe your job is to make the red on this shirt a different color. The color really doesn't matter. How would you target that? Well, you can start by creating a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And then you can either click on this icon and then click on the red areas or without clicking on the red icon, you, uh, uh, I'm sorry, while click, <laughs> let me rephrase that. Click on that finger icon. And then when you click, notice that you adjust the saturation of that color that you selected, right? But if you want to change the color, hold Control on Windows, Command on the Mac and click on that red area and now you can change it. So I'm changing the red. And watch what happens here. I didn't really explain this earlier, but we're gonna take a look at the gradient here. The gradient on top represents the original hues. The gradient at the bottom represents how those hues are being affected by the shift, right? So between these two solid lines, the colors that are in there, the hues that are in here are gonna be turned into whatever I set it here under hue. And then with this um, uh, triangular icon in this 
line icon, everything in there will be a smooth transition between adjusted pixels and unadjusted pixels. Same thing is true from the other side. And you can click and drag these sliders to um, control how or which pixels are adjusted. So in this case, I think I did a pretty good job in targeting those reds, but unfortunately I'm targeting everything else, right? So what do I need to do? Well, I need to create a layer mask. So I'll delete this mask and then hide the layer with the lasso tool or any tool that you want, really, it doesn't matter. Actually, you know what, not the lasso tool. I'll just use the quick selection tool again. Just make a selection around the shirt or the area that you want to adjust. So I'm just gonna make a very quick selection. And again, for the sake of time, this will not be perfect, but I think that you'll get the idea. And if you ever want to check what you have selected and what is not selected in something like this, it's somewhat difficult to see because of the nature of the shirt. What you can do is simply press the Q key on the keyboard to enter the quick mask mode. Anything that is in red is deselected and anything that is in its normal color is selected. So I'm noticing that I'm missing a lot of the shirt down here. And her shoulder as well. And also I noticed that I accidentally selected some of the background here on the bottom right. So I can hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac and subtract from that side. And I probably would get better results if I'm on that layer. I just feel that I get better results when I'm actually on the layer that I'm selecting. Cool. So now that I have the shirt selected, all I need to do is create a layer mask on this layer. When I create a layer mask on this layer, and with that selection active, you see that I'm only affecting those pixels. So now I can just continue adjusting the reds because that's what this tool does. When you click on a color, this tool selects one of these drop downs, one of the options in the drop downs, and adjusts that drop down. So in this case, I adjusted the reds and I can continue making adjustments. So what happens if you want to, for example, create or target the pixels that I adjusted, right? So like right now there's no, I mean, there's a mask that I created around the shirt, but there's no actual mask on the pixels that I'm targeting. So what if I want to add another layer that only targets the pixels that I adjusted with the hue and saturation adjustment layer? It's not too difficult to do, but it's not intuitive. You kind of have to do a hack for Photoshop to target those pixels and the way that you would do that is by going into the background layer, duplicating it, Control J on Windows, Command J on the Mac. Here's the tip for you. You can move layers up and down the layer stack by holding the Control key on Windows, that's the Command key on the Mac, and using the left and right bracket keys. So I can just move the layer down, up, down, up, just by using those bracket keys. And if you hold the Shift key and use the bracket keys, you'll move the layer to the top of the layer stack or to the bottom of the layer stack, depending on which bracket key you tap on. The bracket keys are to the right of the letter P in North American keyboards. But anyway, so now that I have the original image on top, and actually, let me change this to a, 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 like a very different color, like green or something. Yeah, that'll work. Um, so now that I have that layer on top, this background copy, all I need to do is change the blending mode to difference. And the difference blending mode um, looks at both layers, the top layer and the layer on the bottom, or the layers on the bottom. And if the pixels are different, you're going to see the image change to a different color. If the pixels are the same, they'll turn black, right? So in this case, the only pixels that I'm seeing are the pixels that have changed from the original. So what I can do now is use this keyboard shortcut, Control, Alt, and the Control, Alt, Shift, let me try that again because it's not working. Uh, control, Alt, and the number two, that's Command, Option, and the number two on a Mac. So once again, Control on Windows, Alt, and the number two, and Command, Option, and the number two on the Mac to load the bright pixels on screen as a selection. You can see that I have a selection. Then I can just delete this because I don't need it anymore. And what I can do now is create any layer that I want. It really doesn't matter. So what I'll do is I'll just create a group and I'll apply the mask to the group. So anything that I uh, put into that group will affect only the pixels that were affected by the hue and saturation adjustment layer. So I can put in, I don't know, a levels adjustment layer in there and make adjustments if I need to. I can even put 
an actual layer with pixels, like maybe like a pattern. So I can put, you know, I don't know, let's see what, like this pattern here. I can put that pattern in there, see that? And it's only showing in the areas that were affected by the hue and saturation adjustment layer. And I can even adjust the masks. Uh, with the mask selected, I can go into image adjustment levels and, you know, make an adjustment to that mask. See that? Just so that it, so it shows the pixels more. You can do all kinds of stuff. The point is that if you ever want to adjust the pixels that were selected or adjusted rather by any adjustment layer, it doesn't really matter which one. In this case, the hue and saturation adjustment layer, just duplicate the layer, put it above everything else, change the blending mode to difference, and you'll be able to see exactly what pixels were adjusted. Then by using that keyboard shortcut, control, alt, and the number two, you will load those pixels as a selection and you can apply that selection to anything that you want. In this case, I used a, a group, but I could have easily applied that to any other adjustment layer, um, like a curves adjustment layer, and then adjust the curves inside of that selection. So that's one hack, if you will, that you can use to determine what pixels were adjusted and then just make a selection out of those pixels. Cool. So let me see if I have any questions. Yes, the video will be up as soon as I'm done recording it. So as soon as the uh, broadcast is done, it'll be up so you can watch the video. We have Mike watching from the UK. Hey, Mike, how's it going? And yes, Lou, the video will be saved. How long have we, since when have I been using Photoshop? Um, 2001, I think, 2002, something like that. So, you know, 20 years. Um, question, how and why does... I don't understand your question, David. Um, how and why does duplicating the layers... Uh, okay, so I don't know if this is what you mean, but why does me duplicating the layer affect the image? Well, when I duplicate the layer, um, I change the blending mode to difference, and that's how it affects the layer. I'm not sure if that was your question. Okay, so one of the questions says, well, what about colorizing an image that is in grayscale? Well, I mean, there's new tools in Photoshop to do that. So I think I have a photo here. I think I have a black and white photo. Let me see. Uh, I think I have a black and white photo of a baby or maybe it's under kid. Uh, I don't know, black and white. I I thought I had a photo here of, of a baby, but I guess not. Um, that was in black and white. Let me just quickly look through my images here. And if not, I'll just make a fake. Oh, here we go. This, this, this vintage photo, this baby. So how do we colorize a photo that is in, in black and white? Well, if you want to colorize a photo that is in black and white, and by the way, I'm, I'm a cropping the image just so we don't have to deal with all the other extra stuff. Normally I wouldn't do this, but I'm going to delete the crop pixels. Usually you don't want to do that, but for the sake of this tutorial, I, I will uh, of this stream. Um, but anyway, so how do we colorize that? Well, if you're in Photoshop 2021, um, what you can do is just select your layer, go into filters, neural filters, and the new neural filters um, will colorize this image automatically. You can go into the beta filters here. Uh, oh, it looks like I haven't even enabled colorize. So let me just download it really quick. I, oh, something, I th thought I had it enabled. That's weird. Um, let me cancel this and try again. Filter, neural filters. There must've been some sort of update or something because I had been using it and now it tells me that I need to download it again. Let me see. I'm not sure if it's not the, if it's not downloading it because of where because I'm streaming or I'm not really sure what the issue is. But usually when you download it, there's a, a button that you just click and it just colorizes the image for you using AI. Um, I don't know if I want to spend time travel troubleshooting this right now that I'm live on the stream, but you know usually you should be able to just download it and 
and it works. But anyway, I have a video on my YouTube channel. You can look it up. Uh, I think I used a different photo, but it's it's like a one click solution. If you don't have that or you're in an older version of Photoshop or it's not working, like in this case, what you can do is create new layers. There's a lot of techniques. The easiest one is by, you know, selecting a color, like maybe I want him to be wearing a, a blue jacket or suit and I can just paint, you know, change the blending mode to color and I can just go in here and colorize it. So you, it's kind of like, you know, paint by numbers almost. So, you know, you just, you just color that in and you do the same thing for the rest of the image. Obviously that will take you some time. What I like doing is using that AI feature and um, just fixing the mistakes is much faster. I'm sorry that it wasn't working, but like I said, I have a video on it on my YouTube channel. Cool. Um, there's a question about Effects get, oh, um, I'm looking at a question here. So you're saying that the effects get stronger whenever you duplicate an adjustment layer? Well, it all depends on what you're doing, what blending mode you have with that adjustment layer. It, so just so that I don't confuse people, I, I'm i reading a question and the person is asking why does the color adjustment get more intense when you duplicate the layer? Well, whenever you duplicate a layer, um, that layer may have certain properties that affect the layers below. So in this case, it's affecting the layer because I'm shifting the hue. I'm not really sure what you're asking in the questions, David, but um, whatever your adjustment layer is, it has properties. It may have a blending mode. It may have opacity. It may have a hue adjustment like I do in this case. And when you duplicate it, you're stacking those adjustments on top of each other. So that's why they change the layer. I'm not really sure exactly what adjustment you have that's making that change. Will this work with changing eye colors? Um, um, yeah, of course. Um, so let me see if I have any photo of an eye here or maybe face. Uh, I guess I'm just going to put man and see if I have a person's face here. Um, me one second. I'm just trying to see if I have somebody's like a close up of somebody's face that we can use. So I guess maybe her face might be close enough. So yeah, you can use that technique for anything, right? So you can just make a selection out of out of someone's eye, in this case, her eye like so and then just subtract from the bottom here. Um, one thing that you can do is press the Q key again, and then with the brush tool, paint with black, and that will subtract, just like a layer mask. So I'm just subtracting here, and when I press Q again, notice that the selection now is only affecting the areas that I painted on, or, or, or the areas that were the original color, not the areas that were red, the Q key. Or you can click on this icon down here. That's the quick mask mode. Q key. Um, anyway, so with the hue and saturation adjustment layer, you can obviously change eye color. And I would also recommend the same thing. If you're doing a, an eye color adjustment, I would just right away create a group, put that in here, and then with the levels adjustment layer, also control the other a aspects of the eye so that you get a, a, a better result. And just make sure that it's not too uh, saturate, uh, saturated. One of the mistakes that I see the most often with um, eye color adjustments is that the saturation is way too high. So make sure that your saturation is not that high. Bring it low to a natural level. And then, you know, make your adjustment accordingly. Cool. Well, the question is, how does how do you select a definite color to change its hue? I'm I'm not sure what your interpretation of, is of definite color, but I think I know what you mean. So, let me go back to the couch. So, the I'm I'm assuming that you mean the color that is not the shadow and not the highlight and just the definite color. Well, unfortunately, you know, like you really don't know what the definite color is. You can probably say, well, this area here in the couch is not in the shadows and it's not in the bright highlights here. So maybe this is like, you know, like the definite color. Um, if you wanted to select just that co color, it might be a little difficult um, because, 
well, let me rephrase it. It wouldn't be that difficult. If you just wanted to select that particular color, you can go into something like the magic wand tool and just click on there and it would select only the color that you selected. In this case, I'm using a sample size of five by five average with a tolerance of thir uh, 13. What this means is that wherever I click on, Photoshop will look at a basically like a five by five square, five by five pixel square. Uh, it averages those colors together to get a result. And then Photoshop makes a selection of those colors and colors that are somewhat similar to them by tolerance of 13. If I just wanted to select exactly those colors, I can just bring all this all the way down to zero. And when I click, I just select those specific colors. Um, so I, I think that that's probably what you meant. I'm not really sure. Oh, and then the question was to change his hue. Well, the same thing. You would select, uh, like in this case, I would uncheck contiguous and then just click on that color. And then I can go into um, hue and saturation and then change the hue. But, you know, you're not getting the highlights. You're not getting the shadows. You're not getting anything else. So I'm not really sure why you wouldn't want to get those. But I that's how I understood your question. So I apologize if that was not the actual question. Cool. Um, before we go any further, I would like to um, f mention our sponsors, MSI. Thank you so much, MSI, for sponsoring this video. I just want to quickly mention a couple products. The MSI Creator Z16, which is the laptop that I'm currently using, is a fantastic laptop for creators. Um, it's got a lot of fantastic features, including a fast processor, a strong R uh, GeForce RTX 3060 video card, which is fantastic for graphics, video editing, and things like that. It has a fantastic screen with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So you get a little more room here at the bottom when you're working in applications like Photoshop or if you're video editing, you can get more of a timeline. I'm also using the Aegis TI-5 to stream this stream. You can, uh, this is the laptop that, I, or excuse me, desktop that I have here below me on my bottom right. Again, it's a really, really strong laptop. It looks like a UFO, but it is it is a beast of a laptop. Highly, highly recommend it. So thank you, MSI, for sending that over. And also the monitor here where I'm reading your comments on my right-hand side is the MSI Creator PS321QR. It's a 4K monitor. It can reproduce Adobe RGB at 99%. As you can see here, it's got great color representation. It's pre-calibrated at factory, so make sure that you check these products out. You can find out all about them by looking at the links in the description. Again, MSI is the proud sponsor of the Photoshop Training Hour, so thank you so much, MSI, for sponsoring this stream. Again, links are in the description. Cool. Let me see if we have any more questions. All right, so what we're gonna do now is just talk a little bit more about because I'm I'm seeing some questions in the chat about you know specific colors and things like that. So why can't we, you know, select a color? Like, I don't know, we're just going to pick a random color, like maybe this green, right? And why can't we take that green and just apply that green onto the couch? Like, why wouldn't it look the same? Well, if you select this green, and if I start painting on a new layer, let me just make a larger selection here. And I'm using the shift and bracket keys to adjust the hardness of the brush so it's not so soft. So if I take that green, why can't I just paint out it on the couch? Well, you can, right? But then it's really not blending. So how can we blend it? Well, if you click on this drop down and select the color option, that will apply the hue and the saturation of that current layer, but the luminosity of the layer below. So this obviously doesn't look like that. So why, why can't we just paint on it? Well, the thing is, is kind of like I was mentioning earlier, the object here at the bottom has highlights and it has shadows. That's what get it, that's what gives the shape to the couch. If it was just one flat color, it would be super easy to paint. You know, you would just literally paint over the couch with that color and, and there you go, you're done. But unfortunately, or fortunately I should say, the couch has highlights and shadows which 
give its shape. So if you wanted to get this color close to the couch, you would have to, you know, play around a little bit to get that color and you would have to make a decision. What part of the couch or what area in this couch should I try to match to get that color? Because if you try to match the shadows, that probably wouldn't work. If you were to make the shadows this green, that couch wouldn't look realistic. If you were to make the highlight here on the right, this green, that also probably wouldn't be realistic. As you can see, there's a strong light source and it's really making this yellow bright, very, very bright, low saturation. It wouldn't be, if this green, if this couch was this green, it wouldn't have that particular um, shade. It would be much brighter. I guess what I'm trying to say is to think about objects in your image as three-dimensional objects with shadows and highlights. In other words, you're basically looking at something that looks like this. Let me just um, make this black and white and I guess I can call it multiply and reverse it and maybe scale it up. So basically that's what you're looking at, right? It's not just the color that you want. You also have to think about the highlights and shadows. So, all right, now that you are thinking, well, that's great. How do I get that color into my couch? Well, you have to decide which area of this couch you want to match to that green. Let's say that we want to match this area here. Well, now that I have the hue and saturation, I'm basically going to do what I did earlier, which is going to the levels adjustment, or it could be curves up to you. And you can just make an adjustment to try to match the green here in, in the area that we decided was going to be the color that we're, the yellow that we're going to try to turn into this green. And once you make an adjustment here and, and match it, then the rest of the image should match, or I don't want to say should match. It will, it will, it will more likely match. And if you need to, at that point, you can come in here and maybe adjust the shadows and highlights to get a better result. But you know, that all depends on the image and, and, and what's inside the image. So I know that could be a little difficult to understand, but the point is, is that, um, when you are working with a three-dimensional object with highlights and shadows, it's very difficult for you to say, well, I want that green on that couch. You first have to determine what part of that couch you're going to match, and then obviously still keep the highlights and shadows. Cool. Um, I think we, we covered that uh, already, um, Nawaz, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. So the question is, what is the colorized feature in, in the hue and saturation adjustment layer? Like I said before, basically when you're adjusting the hue and saturation, you're shifting the hue. Look at the two gradients here. The gradient on top represents the colors in the image, so the, 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 the hue. And when you are at zero in the hue slider, these two gradients match, right? But when you start shifting the hue, you're like moving the color wheel, you're moving the hue in those colors. So now, whatever was, you see how the couch is yellow right here in the, in the gradient yellow? Watch when I adjust the hue. If I adjust the hue and put the blue underneath the yellow here, notice that the couch is now blue because I'm shifting the hue. So when when it's at zero, they're matching perfectly. But then you adjust the hue slider, so you're adjusting the color wheel, you're moving the color wheel so that the hue is no longer the original hue, now it's whatever it is that you adjust it to, adjust it on that, uh, on this slider. So this is a visual representation of what's going on. So that's what the hue does. If you check colorize, then you're basically telling Photoshop, we're not gonna shift the hues, we're just gonna take the saturation and the brightness let me rephrase that we're going to take the hue and just make it whatever we make it on this slider so when i pick blue here notice now that the entire image is blue before not the entire image was blue just the areas that were originally yellow because we were shifting hues colorize just maps the color that you um, select from the hue slider onto the entire image or whatever is visible on your adjustment layer. So if you want green, just click on green. If you want, you know, blue, click on blue or orange or whatever it is that you want and then adjust the saturation. 
and then adjust the lightness. So I hope that that clears up your question. Cool. Um, yeah, so we have about five minutes to go. So let me know if you have any other comments or questions in the chat. I think that we went a little fast today, so I cover everything that I wanted to cover. So I'm just gonna um, answer any questions that you have now if they come up. If not, then I'll be saying goodbye and I'll be recording a tutorial today that should be out by Monday. Again, the Photoshop training hour will now be on Wednesday. So I hope that that works out better for you. They used to be on Friday, now we're gonna do them Wednesday. Cool. Um, so Shibam is asking about skin tones. I don't have images ready for that, Shibam. So maybe I'll consider making a full episode on skin tones coming up. But I do have skin tone tutorials on my YouTube channel if you want to check them out. But if you have any questions about color matching or color swapping, let me know. I guess um, since we are talking about color matching and color swapping, um, if you wanted to do something like this in Lightroom, you can. Um, but I don't think I have the images ready. Let me see. Lightroom. Let me open up Lightroom and then we'll, we'll do something in Lightroom. Give me one second while I find the right image for this. This is Lightroom and we have this guy on the skateboard. And if you wanted to change the color of something in Lightroom, what you can do is use the brush tool and you can just start painting on the areas that you want to adjust. Right? And then you can just come here and adjust the hue. Notice this? Very similar to the hue slider in Photoshop right here. See that? And then obviously you can zoom in and start making more detail adjustments. So you can just come in here and paint. You can open this up and you can see different options. We have the auto mask option. If you uncheck that, you just paint normally. See that? See how I'm just painting normally? And if you enable um, auto mask, then you won't, you can stay within the line. See how I'm not painting the sky? Because that center X, whatever I click on, Photoshop will just find colors similar to whatever's on that X. And if there's a edge, then Photoshop will not paint over the edge. See that? So this is how I can stay within the lines. If I were to disable auto mask and continue painting, then I will go over the line. So I'll disable auto mask and then I'll continue painting and notice that this time I am going over the line. See that? So auto mask helps you stay within the lines when you're painting in Lightroom. But anyway, so you can just come in here and paint whatever you want. In this case, I'm painting this shirt and I'm not gonna take the time to paint the entire shirt, but when you're done, you can just adjust this hue slider and obviously you can adjust the saturation and other different colors. Or you can come into this colorize feature, enable that, and you can col and you can apply this colorizing effect. Totally up to you. But you can also bring the saturation down and then make the appropriate adjustments here in the colorize feature. So this is how you can do color changes or color swaps in Lightroom. Cool. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been an awesome stream. It's already been one hour. I got to let you guys go, but I look forward to seeing you here again in the Photoshop training hour next week and also uh, seeing you guys in the usual tutorials. Once again, thank you to our sponsors at MSI. I'm pointing at MSI. I know you can't see the logo. Thank you to MSI for sponsoring today's videos. Uh, today's stream and also look in the description for the links to the MSI products that I described earlier, the laptop monitor and desktop. Everybody, thank you so much for joining me. It's been a pleasure. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful day. Bye.